Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to an absolute detailed look at Ohio State's 2023 current commits, where they stack up in terms of rankings, who's expected to rise as we get through many of these big time recruiting sites, uh, midsummer updates. Now guys, 247 Sports will be releasing a major midsummer update sometime in July. Of course, right now we've got the Elite 11 quarterback competition going on, so they're not going to be releasing an update, you know, within the next week. It'll likely come early to mid July. Uh, Rivals just recently updated their 2023 class, so I would say their next update will probably come in August. ESPN, who knows? And on three, I would say on three, probably maybe towards the end of July, they'll have another update. But we are going to take a look at the complete industry comparison on many different Ohio State current commits. Of course, the Buckeyes do own the number one overall class. They'll be battling Notre Dame, where Notre Dame's expected to get several commits. So is Ohio State in the first half of July. And guys, by August 1st, I expect we will have an extremely good idea on where this Ohio State class stands. By August 1st, I'd say Ohio State at minimum will be at 20 commits. I'm expecting five or six defensive commits throughout the entire month of July, along with maybe an offensive tackle as well. So by August 1st, we should have a major uh, kind of projection on where the Ohio State class will, will end up. Ryan Day and Ohio State like getting their class done by August or most of the class done and then focusing on the season. Of course, Ohio State pretty much, I mean, the favorite to win the national championship in 2022. But guys, when it comes to the top commits for the Buckeyes, Carnell Tate, this is one of the most egregious things we've seen in recruiting history. Carnell Tate, the number 17 overall player on the on three rankings. 247 Sports has him at 14th overall. Rivals has him at the number five overall player. And ESPN doesn't even have him inside their top 100. Guys, it's getting really sad with ESPN. It's just, it's ESPN. I don't even know if they have a recruiting division anymore. They don't even update their rankings. Let's just remove them from the composite. They don't even have a class of 2024, but this is just egregiously bad. I mean, if if you think Carnell Tate is overrated, that's fine, and that's your opinion as a talent evaluator. But to put him at as the 19th best receiver? Like, you realize Tennessee offered Carnell Tate seven figures in an NIL deal, and you think, oh, he's the the 19th best receiver. You think he's overrated, that's fine. Rank him 70th overall. To have him at 134, it's just such a lack of just understanding. A lack of understanding. I mean, it's not a big issue if you think he's overrated, but 134 is completely disrespectful. So maybe ESPN will update it, and they'll move him up. I don't even know. But all the other recruiting sites agree Carnell Tate is a top 20 player, And he is ranked right now kind of as a composite five-star. And the only reason he's so low in terms of his composite rating, I mean, is because you're going to get dragged down if you're ranked 134th, according to one site. Next, we've got Brandon Innes. And Brandon Innes is a guy who's been thought of as one of, if not the top overall receiver since he was basically a freshman in high school. I remember the initial 2023 class, Anis was ranked as the number one receiver. A little bit surprising, on three has Brandon all the way down at number 72. I'm not understanding that. 247 Sports has him at 19, ESPN has him at number 25, and Rivals is really high on both Carnell Tate and Brandon Ennis, has him at number 6 overall. So maybe some upward upward, upward movement possible for Ennis. If you look at the on 3, maybe they can move him up at like, you know, 20 or 30 spots. But overall, I think it's pretty fair. Brandon Ennis is a really good receiver, and maybe he moves up a little bit if on 3 moves him up. Next, we've got Luke Montgomery, who a lot of people are speculating will be playing offensive guard. 
On three has him listed as a guard. 247 Sports has him listed as a tackle. I think he plays guard in college. That's why Ohio State is putting so much emphasis on recruiting an elite offensive tackle. We know they've struggled to do that recently. I think Luke Montgomery's ratings are perfect. Uh, you know, his overall... 43 on on three, 61 on 247, 68 on ESPN, and then 43 on Rivals. So they're all in agreement. He's around, a, you know, a top 50 player. I don't think he's going to drop much unless he has, you know, bad camps, which I haven't heard anything about that. So during the next update, I don't think Luke Montgomery's going to drop at all. He'll probably stay. He'll probably drop a few spots, but the only reason he'll drop a few spots is because other guys will rise above him. So maybe he drops to like composite like 50th, but either way, he's still a really good recruit, the number one player in Ohio. Next, we've got Noah Rogers, who I think is really underrated. I don't know how underrated you can be. I mean, he's still a top 60 overall player. You take a look, on three has him at 42, 247 Sports has him at 79. I think 247 Sports will move him up at least 30 spots. Personally, during their next update, ESPN has him at 57, and then Rivals has him at 72, so they're all in agreement. He's a solid top 80 player, but guys, if you listen to people in North Carolina, they say this is the best recruit they've seen in like five years, and that's with Travis Shaw. You know, he was a really good recruit, Tony Grimes. So there's been several guys. Actually, Tony Grimes was from Virginia, I think. But either way, there's been several several highly ranked players. And Noah Rogers, many people are speculating, will be moved up to possibly becoming a composite five-star, which would give Ohio State three composite five-star receivers. Uh, and again, I'd say 247 with him being ranked 79th overall and the number 12th receiver. He's certainly a top 10 receiver, guys. I mean, come on. That's not a good ranking. So I would expect him to move up pretty significantly during this next update. Next, we got D. John Johnson. And this is pretty crazy. So on three has him as the number 59 overall player. 247 Sports has him at 231. This is a guy that is really rising up lately. And I think during 247's next big midsummer July update, he will rise at least a hundred spots, which is gonna bump Ohio State's overall average up significantly. There's no way he should be ranked 231st. ESPN has him at 113, and then Rivals has him at 88. So if 247 Sports does move him up like we expect they will, he is going to absolutely shoot up the composite list, probably become a top 70, maybe a top 60 overall player. This is a stud cornerback. He's 6'1", 187. This is a superstar. What a job by Ryan Day. What a job by that defensive staff to get him committed. He's been shooting up the boards. Next, we've got Ty Lockwood. And an another interesting one, on three, doesn't even have him ranked. So I think that means he's outside of their top 250. He's ranked as the 18th best tight end, according to On3. 247 Sports has him 120th. ESPN has him 132. And Rivals has him 112th. So three out of the four recruiting services agree he's somewhere just outside that top 100 range. But On3 is really down on him. They've got him as the number 18th overall tight end and the number eight player in the state of Tennessee. So they're really down on him. I don't know for what reason. I'm sure they have their own reasons, but um, kind of interesting. I think he's fairly ranked. You know, his composite is like around 120th. I think that's fair for Ty Lockwood. Next, we've got Malik Hartford, the in-state product, the safety. And here's another crazy one with ESPN, guys. It's just ridiculous. So on three, has him at one. 154, 247 Sports has him inside the top 100 at 92. Rivals has him at 162, and ESPN has him as a three-star. I'll be honest with you guys, I question whether ESPN even knows who this kid is and whether or not they even scout the North. It's just so bad, they spend no money. With the pandemic, it's only made it worse. It's only made their recruiting worse. They've got no insiders. You know, at what point do we stop taking the ESPN 300 seriously? They don't scout players from the North. I don't think they know who this kid is. They just see he's committed to Ohio State. And then they throw his name up there as a three-star? Ranked, you know, as a 79 overall rating? 
This is ridiculous, man. Just completely ridiculous. The next commit, it's going to be Kyan Lee. Of course, Kyan just recently committed to Ohio State a few days ago, the cornerback from Georgia. And on three, loves this kid. They've got him at 76th overall. Here is another cornerback who is ranked really low, according to 247 Sports. He's ranked 226th. And I think, like D. John Johnson, this kid has a significant chance to move up during 247 Sports' next ranking update, possibly moving up maybe 100 spots. He, you know, you're ranked 226th. That's really low. Remember, this is, a guy, this is a guy that Georgia wanted, and he originally was committed to Georgia. He decommitted and then recently committed to Ohio State. ESPN has him at 177, and then Rivals actually has him pretty low as well at 191. So that is interesting that on three has him kind of the outlier there at 76. We will see if the other recruiting services follow and give Kyan Lee a much-deserved bump that he needs. Another guy we're looking at is Cedric Hawkins. I think Cedric Hawkins is perfectly ranked, honestly. Uh, they've all got him as kind of a solid four-star, ranked around 200th. Uh, if you look, 247 Sports does have him outside of their top 247, but he still is ranked as a four-star. I think Cedric Hawkins is more of a depth piece. Ideally, he would be your number three safety in a class that's led by Caleb Downs and Malik Hartford. That's the ideal situation for Ohio State because they're getting Caleb Downs. We already know that. I've already confirmed that Caleb Downs will be a Buckeye by the end of July. This is a really good safety class, and this is just a depth piece for Jim Knowles from the state of Florida. I don't think he's going to you know, shoot up the ranks. He's more of a depth piece in my opinion. And then this is another one we got to talk about. It's Mark Fletcher. And, you know, Mark's a guy that's really gotten crushed the past month or so. He's had three straight updates have just knocked him down significantly. You take a look on three has him listed as a three-star. Um, and the 33, over, wow. Okay, so honestly, this is just on three as a complete outlier. ESPN, 247, and Rivals all have Mark Fletcher as a top 10 running back. On three has met number 33 overall and the number 88 player in the state of Florida, and I think it's due to how slow he is. Now, Rivals recently came out with an update a few weeks ago and knocked Mark Fletcher down about 30 spots. It'll be interesting to see if 247 Sports, in their next update, knocks Mark Fletcher down even more because he's a guy whose stock is significantly down and Ohio State is desperate to find another running back in this class. It was looking good early in the process for Richard Young, but then he never visited, and then he recently silently committed to Alabama, and they're not letting him visit Ohio State. So it's unfortunate. Justice Haynes, they're still working on from Georgia, but it's a tough pull, and they're really looking for another running back. Maybe they go the way of the transfer portal, because you guys have to understand the running back situation. You've got Trevion. He's going to be there this year and next year, but after next year, is Evan Pryor a vi viable option? Maybe he transfers. Mayan Williams is going to be long gone at that point. Uh, Dolan Hayden, is he good enough? I don't think so. Um, so they, there may be a running back problem if Ohio State's not able to land another good one. And then Bryson Rogers. So this is actually not updated. 247 Sports recently bumped up Bryson Rogers to a four-star and he's ranked a little bit higher. He is a guy who is definitely a stock-up guy, and he recruits really well for Ohio State. So people are going to look at his ranking and say, well, he's not a top 200 player. But guys, trust me, I know recruiting. I know, I know how this works. This kid is extremely valuable. So is Brandon Innes. Brandon Innes is recruiting so well, but Bryson Rogers, he's great for the class. He's great for morale. Just because he's ranked lower... You need guys like that in the class. Not every guy's going to be top 100. Not every guy's going to be top 100. And this kid's actually moving up significantly, according to 247 Sports. They bumped him up recently. So that's just a few Ohio State 2023 commits. The two cornerbacks, I would expect, will, will shoot up the boards, especially Kyan Lee and Johnson. 247 Sports is really low on them. And then the whole Carnell Tate thing with ESPN. 
Who knows with that? ESPN is a complete mess. And then same thing with Malik Hartford, the ESPN having him as a three-star. I mean, your guess is, I don't think they know who he is, guys. He has ESPN. They don't have a recruiting budget. They should not even they, they, they should not even be involved. They don't even have a class of 2024 rankings. These people, their job is to rank players. They don't have a class. What do you do? It's like if I was an ESPN executive, I would go to whoever r runs their rankings and be like, "You have one job. You rank players and and write recruiting stories. That's your job." What are you doing all day? Like, what is, your, what, today, you need to tell me, tomorrow, what are you going to be doing? You work for my company, you're in recruiting. What are you doing with your time? Somebody tell me. It makes no sense, guys. They don't even have, uh, whatever, guys. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description, guys. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.